Good afternoon. I, too, want to thank the governor for being here. I'm Michelle Sutton, the CEO of North Oaks Health System in Hammond, Louisiana. So I'm going to take a little bit different perspective. I'm going to talk from an operational standpoint. When I got up this morning, the first thing I did was look to see how many COVID-positive patients did I have in our small community hospital. We had 89. I had 13 patients in the ED waiting for a bed, 10 of which were COVID-positive. We've already opened a surge ICU, so now I'm running three full ICUs. We had to discontinue elective surgeries so that we could turn our recovery room into a third ICU. Where do we go next? Where we go next is we're asking for help to get staffing. Why? Because we have 62 employees out with COVID right now. 62. We have beds, but we don't have people to staff them. Right now, 50% of our patients are COVID positive inside our facility, 50%. We are the level two trauma center for region nine. So we're worried what happens when a trauma comes in. Where does that patient go? The other thing we're concerned about is even though we're on diversion, which means we're asking for ambulances not to come to us, divert to another facility, there's not another facility for them to go to. So when I'm making rounds, it's not uncommon to see five, six stretchers lining up in our emergency room hallway with the EMS driver standing by waiting to offload, but I don't have a room to put them in. The other day we had 20, over 20 boarders and I had a waiting room of over 80 patients waiting to come in. Our staff is demoralized because they truly believe this surge was preventable if we had all done our part with vaccinations and with masking. We appreciate the governor's standing up and asking the public to please wear a mask, help us. Our staff is seeing the deaths of young people. We're not accustomed to that. We're here to save lives, to improve lives. Today, this morning, we had a 24-year-old die of COVID unvaccinated. It was preventable. In the last two weeks, we've had 14 deaths, most between 24 and 55 years old. This Delta variant has changed. The other thing is the employees' morale. We actually had a counselor coming in this evening to help with resiliency and for our staff to be able to talk about what they're seeing. I got a text right before we walked in here to say that the counselor's team had COVID and they couldn't come. But they'd be here in two weeks to help our staff. To put in perspective, they're having to make tough decisions. How do we care? When we're doing elective surgeries, we have a core group of doctors trying to decide who gets to have surgery and who doesn't because that operating room staff is now staffing our ICUs because we can't find nurses. Let me give you an example of what happened last week to summarize and put it in perspective. Our chief medical officer meets with our chief of surgery and with our OR team to look at all the surgeries for the next day to see which ones are life-threatening or which ones can we put off maybe for a day or a week. And he went into a gentleman's room and explained, we can't fix your brain aneurysm tomorrow like we had hoped because we don't have a critical care bed to put you in when you come out of surgery. And he put his hand on our chief medical officer's shoulder and said, sir, I know this is hurting you more than it's hurting me, but I pray for you and for your staff. Please help us. Healthcare workers are heroic, they're heroes, but this has been a long 17 months and we need you. Thank you. Uh, 
j just so I'm clear, when you talked about having 62 employees out, um, out with COVID currently, can you tell me if they are, um, like out of how many employees you're talking about? And can you also tell me how many beds are in your hospital and what your vaccination rates are of staff? Sure, so we have 2,700 employees. So 62 out of 2,700. We're licensed for 330 beds, but I can't staff that many. So today we're only staffing a little bit over 200 beds because we, can, we don't have the staff for it. As far as our vaccination rate, we're, at, we're ahead of the state, but it's still not where we wanna be. We're at 43% fully vaccinated. 